that I uh, have time, unfortunately, to go through the, to join you in your journey. But um, uh, yeah, I wish you luck. If you find errors um, in the in the text or in the code, just uh, you can file a GitHub issue or um, send me an email or something. Uh, just I'll just give you a status update. So it has gone. I've said, sent it to MIT Press. Um, they haven't yet sent it to the printers. It will come out next spring, the hard copy. But um, it will be a living document. So I'll make it, you know uh, updates probably once a quarter or so online. So if you do find errors, then they will get fixed. If they're like math errors, then you know you should let me know right away. If it's other, if it's just I forgot a comma or a typo, then just make use the GitHub issues is the best way to keep track of it. Um, yeah, so I hope you find it uh, useful. I am working on volume two. Um, it's been sort of put on hold because I've been busy with other things, but volume two will be a more advanced sequel. So if you make your way through volume one, um, then uh, there's more <laughs> and you want to learn more. There is more in the future. Somebody asked me to share the link. Um, so the master site, oh yeah, all right, beaten to it. Um, Great. So I know you're you're being quite ambitious with your timetable, covering a lot. So yeah. um, I, I won't take any more time up. But yeah, I wish you luck, and um, yeah, just feel free to reach out to me if the clarifications that you need. I have okay. found because I, I was preparing the first chapter. I have found one uh, mis, mis, mistake. So there is a plot for um, wait a second. There is a plot for. Delta functions, I will tell you now, because I think you will leave. Um, so this is uh, page 64, illustration of empirical graph PDF. So you plotted the delta functions with scale of one, but because there are five delta functions, I believe they should be like one, one fifth each. So, which page is this? Page uh, sixty-four, illustration of empirical graph PDF. I mean, it might is. Oh, I see. Yeah, oh, yeah. I believe. I, I would just get from. Um. Well, it's a delta function, so it's weighted, right? Um, yeah, so, but I, I believe it should be one fifth by the formula that was before that. Yeah, that's true. Okay, why don't you file a GitHub issue? Yeah, yeah. That's this the is the best perfect. way. This is the kind of thing that, yeah, like there's probably lots of small things like that. Um, yeah, this is perfect for GitHub because I want to keep track of it. I won't remember to fix it. Um, yeah. But you're right. Yeah, they're, they're weighted spikes, right? The delta function is just an infinite spike. So technically, it goes to infinity, not even to one. <laughs> um, you can think of it as a PDF. Cool. Okay. Well, right. thank you very much for, for joining us and introducing the book. And it's nice to actually yeah. hear you and see you in person. <laughs> you know, we get Likewise. to meet the author. Yeah, thanks, yeah. And um, we'll be in touch. Sounds good. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Um, okay. So now I'm going to hand off to uh, Anton. And um, let me see. Can, uh, can you share your screen with us? I believe you should provide me the, um, uh, the permission think... because it says that only oh you're right hold on a second okay um okay uh okay try it now yeah perfect okay oh and and folks um please uh, please keep your your microphone muted during the presentation um just so we don't have any background noise um, and we can, um, you know, we can ask, we can have discussions afterwards. Is your microphone on, Anton?
I'm sorry, I was muted. <laughs> so it's my pleasure to present here in the reading group. And I think the first chapters are very straightforward. But let's um, start from, so today's plan is to go for chapter two. And wait a second, there are some general things about probability I want to cover from the text. So first of all, Kevin wrote about two different approaches, frequencies and Bayesian. I, Bayesian, I will uh, do some examples on Bayesian approach today when we can uh, estimate probability with zero um, outcomes. So just based on our prior information. But um, most of this chapter, I believe, is based on the frequency approach. Also, uh, you mentioned some times of uncertainty. I think it's important just to be aware of. So one uncertainty is the model uncertainty. Um, it's called epistemic uncertainty. And another is just because of the um, data themselves. So it's called aleatoric uncertainty. Anyways, some things well to, good to know. And because we will um, talk about probability, I found it's important to introduce the definitions. So uh, we will go through two definitions. Definition, the notion of events and notion of random variables. Let's uh, start from events. So Omega denotes the set of mutually exclusive outputs. I believe I'm pretty far from others, so I can take off the mask. And um, um, if we combine a, this elementary events, we will get the standard event. Let's look um, at the example. For example, we toss twice a coin and elementary outputs are these four. Twice we'll have head, then first time head, second time tail, first time tail, second time head, and first and second times tails. So these are four elementary events. We don't have other um, outputs and they're mutually exclusive. And on this, uh, from this space, we can combine and um, to do like more uh, complicated events. For example, event, event A, the first um, toss resulted in head. So this is the set of um, two elementary events. First time was head, second time head, first time head, second time tail. So this is just, I, feel, I think it gives your understanding of what is the elementary event and what is event. And also there is a function defined on the set Amiaga. Um, it's called probability if it sums up to one. So it's reasonable to assume that each event has equal probability, one fourth. And um, the sum over four events will be exactly one. And the probability of this um, more complicated event will be the sum over 
elementary events from this event. In this case, it's probability of head first, head second, and head first, tail second. And it's just one for twice. Another example, uh, okay, there is a question in the chat. Oh, okay, it's my, it's my bad, it's misprint. Yeah, it, I wrote it to Rn, but it's to R. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I, I did the slides yesterday, <laughs> so it's, uh, it, can, it can contain errors. <laughs> so um, the second example, uh, let's try to toss coin till the first, Head. In this case, the set of um, elementary events is uh, infinite because um, the head can be on the second, on the tenth, on the thousands, thousands. So this is an example of. Um, counting space. And if we define probabilities in such manner as for the first event, one half for the second, one half power two and so on, uh, then we can, for example, find the probability of event that the number of tosses was even. So this event, um, contains of even number of tosses and the probability is given below. So let's go move ahead. Um, yeah, here the summary of um, the properties of this uh, probability P. So this function over the whole space is equals to one and the probability of sum equals to the sum of probabilities minus the probability of um, joint event. Um, yeah, I didn't try the proof, but it's straightforward. So these properties later we will take them as axioms of the probability for arbitrary uh, space of events. What else? Yes, if the um, events are disjoint, it means that uh, their intersection is empty. Set then probability of the sum is the sum of probabilities without this additional minus term. So um, there, as I said, the discrete space of events is the simplest one. And um, in this discrete case, there are two uh, main schemes of um, probability space, the classical scheme and Bernoulli scheme. So let's just take a look at the... Um, so in classical scheme, um, our space of elementary events contains of the finite number of elements n capital, and we assign the probability um, uniformly to each element, one over n. And in this case, the probability of um, more complex event is defined just as the number of elements in this complex event divided by the number of elements. And um, the second scheme is Bernoulli when we um, like sample from the set of zero and ones and 
on each step, uh, there is only one of two outputs. Uh, and this output happens with um, probability p, lowercase. Then we can, and uh, so we have like a sequence of these uh, trials. And if the um, length of the sequence n, then um, we can define the event as uh, the number of ones in n trials. And probability of k ones in n trials will be given by this formula below p power k times one minus p power n minus k. So like k positive outcomes and n minus k negative. And um, so this probability for one sequence, but if we are interested in probability um, of k ones in any sequence of length n, then we should also multiply by the combinations. So, um, well, the important um, property of this Bernoulli scheme is that each trial is independent on of the others. And now we introduce the notion of independence. So two events are in, independent if the probability of the um, intersection is the product of probabilities. For example, in our first coin to tossing example, um, we can find the probability of the first head. As you remember, it was the probability of two uh, uh, elementary events, head, head, and head tail, and it was one half. So in the same manner, we can define probability that this on the second person we had tail. So it is um, the combination of events head tail and and lower case in uh, do you mean in the previous one in or in the and lower case denotes the number of events not sure um, it, it. oh sorry <clears throat> uh, ah it was for the first no yes yeah, sorry there was miss um, a typo okay um, so let's look at the probability of the event HT that first was head and second tail, it's one fourth. But on the other hand, it's the product of one half, and um, we can um, substitute this one half by the probability that we had head on the first person and tail on the second person. And you see that this definition of independence is satisfied. That means that the appearing of head on the first or second tosin is independent on the other, other tosin. And also there is notion of joint independence. Um, so that's it about independence. And also I wanted yeah, to introduce here the notation of conditional probability, because Murphy uses also conditional independence. And before that, we need to introduce the conditional probability. 
Um, and I want to start not from the formula, but the formula is below, but from the example. And um, when I was studying probability, I think I couldn't understand this conditional probability formula uh, before I just calculated several examples with numbers with person, the die or um, coins. And so I decided to start from example in this uh, case. So what is the probability of the event head tail? If we know that on the first um, person we had head. Um, well, this uh, uh, event contains, um, can be produced by two events, head tail and head head. And as we calculated before, it was one half. But uh, let's try to, to, to get this one half from two other numbers, from one fourth, which is the probability of this event, HT, and from the probability one half, which is the probability of this conditional event. It's, I believe you can um, guess that it's enough just to divide one fourth by one half to get one half. And this is uh, exactly the conditional probability formula. So you divide the joint probability on the conditional probability. So it's only definition and nothing else. Okay. Oh, sorry, interrupting you. How can we prove that events are independent? Is it an assumption? Well, um, there is the definition. So uh, the definition of two of the independence of two events A and B. So to prove that uh, you should calculate the probability of the joint event, the probability of each event separately, and if the, this equality satisfied, then we say they are independent. There is no other way to, to prove the independence of two events. Um, and the, I did this in this uh, toy example. Okay. And um, now when also Murphy has this total probability formula and bias rule formula. So let's look at this. Um, so assumed we have this set of um, events, B1, B2, and so on, Bn, and also event A, and um, these events B1, B2, and Bn, we can call them hypotheses, this joint, and event A is a subset of uh, the joint of this, this joint events B. In this case, the probability of the event A can be calculated by this formula, the probability of a, 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 a given first hypothesis times the probability of this hypothesis and so on. And here is the proof. I don't know why I decided to include because it's very short. The probability of event A is the probability of the union of A, B because A contains in the union of these and the probability of union that is the sum of probabilities. And then for this um, event AB, we apply conditional probability definition. Um, you remember it was AB over P of B. It was the conditional probability of A given B. So, um, yeah, I, can, I should write it down. So um, we had formula P of A, oops, given B. 
So if I write in was B over joint of AB over P of B. And from this formula, we want to figure out the numerator. So it will be just conditional probability times P of B. So that's it. Uh, the second formula is also straightforward. It's called Bayesian rule, I believe sometimes. So how to find the probability of hypothesis B given the event A under the same assumptions. So let's use the conditional probability definition. It's the joint probability or P probability of the condition. And then use the total probability formula in the denominator. And in the numerator, we use again conditional probability. So we obtain the um, last formula, which is the gold Bayesian rule. Bayesian, I think, Bison, Bison rule. Sorry for my problem. Pronunciation. So um, now uh, we were talking about the discrete space of events, but if we measure temperature, it will be continuous event. If we measure, uh, I mean, from the real line, if we measure the electrocardiogram, then this will be the functional functional space of events. So the general definition of the events is um, uh, given I, on the next slide, but before going to that, we need to introduce the notion of algebra. So the algebra uh, A, Calligraphical is the subset of the space omega. If the omega contains this, um, is contained in algebra, and for two any elements of this algebra, the intersection and union also contains in this algebra, and also the opposite event contains in this algebra. If uh, the infinite number of um, unions or intersections also contains in, al in our algebra, then it's called sigma algebra. And uh, let's think about um, the intervals on the real line. If we take the intervals and then we will take all the unions or intersections, then um, it will be a com uh, complicated uh, set. But um, the algebra that uh, contains all the unions, or let's say is it contains all the intervals, is called, um, well, I have also say what is the minimal. The minimal al algebra containing these intervals is called Borel sigma algebra, which will be used all the time in the, when we, deal with probability. And uh, also I have to say that the second um, assumption the, that the union is the part of algebra follows from the fraud and uh, one. So sometimes people define that intersection um, is belongs to algebra or union is belongs, belongs to algebra or we can define those both so algebra. And now we are ready to 
Yes, some examples of sigma algebra. Uh, for example, I will do this um, on the next slide here. So for example, um, if we go to the, back to our example with um, tossing coin, or in general, for any discrete space, the sigma algebra is defined as the set of all subsets. So in this case with coins, uh, the sigma algebra contains of these events, head, 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 tail, then the um, two element subsets like head, head, and head, tail, you remember it's event that the first was head. Um, then we will, we need, I, I didn't try it all, all the subsets, but I think you get the idea. For example, we can use three, um, three um, elementary events as a subset. So, and finally it will, contain the whole set Amiga and the empty set. I hope it answers your question. So, um, in case of continuous sets, we can say that sigma algebra consists of all the possibility. Uh, I will, go to this yeah I, uh, when i i was going to talk about this when we define the this probability set yes uh, for now uh, let's say that if we uh, de we are dealing with uh, continuous like intervals events and we take all the um, intersections and uh, or for example, let's think about counter set on the line or about some exotic sets on the line. There is a theorem that there are some sets on the real line which are not measurable. If they are not measurable, we can't define the probability. So um, that's why we restrict ourselves by this notion of sigma algebra, because all the events from sigma algebra, all the sets from sigma algebra will be measurable. So yeah, you're correct that uh, we can't can consider all subsets in um, in general. Yeah, it works for discrete space, but for other cases, it could not work. So we restrict ourselves, um, yeah. Or, um, okay, uh, another, there are also other um, thoughts that I read about this. For example, um, if we have the com complicated uh, um, space of events, probably we are not able to define probability to each event. So then we define the probability only for a subset of events, which is algebra. Then there is a theorem. Okay, probably let's... Uh, there is a theorem that if there is algebra, then it can be continued to sigma algebra. And um, so this is another reason why we use this sigma algebra notion, because we can define, for example, probability on the small subsets uh, of our set. Okay. 
I understand the notion. Okay, it's cool. Yeah, I think that <laughs> I decided to write the slides because Murphy didn't define the probability, but the whole book will deal with probabilities and we need to understand it, understand the definition. So here is the definition of abstract space of events. So consider we're given the set omega of events and there is a sigma algebra defined on this space. Then people also call this measurable space because as I said, later we will see that each event from the sigma algebra can be, uh, can be measured, so it will be measurable. And that's why we will be able to define probability. So um, then the probability on this measurable space is defined by three axioms. So the first that it's not negative. Yes, this function from omega to real line, not Rn, <laughs> as I, it was a mistake, to real line, R1. Um, then um, the, this function on the whole space is summed up to one. And if we are given the sequence of um, events from sigma algebra, or wait a second, I defined here for algebra, but as I said, um, um, any algebra can be then enlarged to sigma algebra. Or we could just substitute A with F calligraphical. So um, for disjoint events, um, the fallen um, equality should, should hold the probability of union of this joint event is the sum of probabilities of these events. Okay, so here it is, the theorem, Carl uh, Theodoris theorem, which says that um, if we have um, defined the measurable space on algebra, it's with uh, probability function p, we can find the minimal sigma algebra which contains our algebra A and um, also we can continue this probability um, function P, I denote, I denoted Q and construct this um, which is called probability space, the triple omega um, sigma algebra f the set of events and uh, q the measure but it's important that for each element from our algebra a the probability q will be the same as defined probability p so i almost done with my slides because we have also to cover the um, material in the book, but we need also to introduce the notion of random variables. Because now we just introduced the notion of the prob probability space. But now we want uh, also, we will all the time to deal with functions on this space. And also because I have to present next time, sorry, if I will not cover something today, we will cover next time. But I think it's very important to um, introduce the notions, the definitions. Okay, so a random variable is a function from the uh, space of events to real line. And uh, this function should be measurable. What does measurable with in, in sense of Borel, because there is also measure in sense of Le Lebesgue, but in this case, it's measurable in sense of Borel. What does it mean? It means that this um, 
um, sorry, I forgot the name for, there's the image and pre-image, I believe. Okay, so um, the pre-image of any Borel set, um, you remember that Borel's algebra is the sigma algebra containing all the intervals. So you can think about B as an interval, but it could be also the joy of intervals. It's also just one point. Um, so B here is the part of real line. And it's composed um, so of events uh, such that this function C maps these events to this B. So if this set is an element of our sigma, sigma algebra, then such function is called measurable function. And so the, this function C, like um, um, sets the mapping between our space of events, omega with um, the set of events sigma algebra F, it gives correspondence to the, oh, sorry, this B should be calligraphical, it's Borel sigma algebra. And um, uh, so it gives correspondence between real line with sigma algebra B and the space of events. And here is the example. So it's good that I don't need to explain how to construct sigma algebra, we did it before. So it's just the um, set of all subsets. And let's uh, define this function C on omega. We have only four elements. So define function C I choose these numbers randomly, <laughs> just mapped the first event, head head to zero, head tail to one, and tail head to two, and tail tail to three. You could use other numbers. It absolutely doesn't matter. And um, uh, yes, here we need to introduce another notion the notion of distribution. So the function P defined on the real line, oh, sorry, there is the questions. It's correct to read that line, line, this is over. Um, the question is in the chat about the measurable, um, the measurable uh, function. Um, well, there are two definitions actually of measurable functions. Here I just from the um, one that we will use. Um, the idea is that you take any, uh, you have two, two spaces. You have space omega with sigma algebra F and you have a real line with sigma algebra B. You take any element from sigma algebra B and you look at um, all the elements from your set omega, which are mapped into this B. And if this set is element of sigma algebra F, so it's kind of uh, to assure you that um, if you take um, the if you want if you want to then introduce the measure it can be done uh, that the, your 
frame which will be also measurable. Um, visibility. Mm. I'm not sure if it's about invertibility. It's about the mappings between two, two sets. Um, so oh, also I, in the end, I also, uh, all this stuff, what I'm talking about, I took from this book. Um, so I encourage you probably to look there if you have questions about measurable functions, but um, generally it's the, not the probability theory, it's the real analysis uh, stuff, the measurable functions. And uh, well, for us, it's important just that we can go from one representation in real line, like numbers, to another representation in the events like tolerance, like temperature, and so on. Well, and so here is uh, you remember we defined our function probability on the space of events. It was p, but now we define the function the probability on the space of of, on the real numbers, on the um, any interval or Borelian space um, sigma algebra. And it's called distribution because you all know the distributions, how to work, how to plot them. It's all the stuff that we were taught on the first interval probability call class. And um, just when we were taught that, we didn't realize that this uh, function is defined not on the events, it def it's defined on the Borelian sig sigma algebra, on the real numbers. But now I hope you understand this um, uh, correlation. Okay, so if we'll uh, take, uh, the element of Borelian sigma algebra as this interval from minus infinity to x. And look at this probability that I called in the previous slide the um, I forgot how it's called. Well, it's, uh, it's the distribution, right? distribution. So then um, if we take this specific intervals and calculate the uh, distribution, then it's called the cumulative distribution function, uh, F capital usually, but denote that. And if we go to the space of, um, discrete events with Tosin, you remember, uh, I defined the, the mapping from events to numbers like one, uh, zero, one, two, three. Then, um, for example, here, I defined the probability of the event two tails. Um, you remember it's one fourth. Uh, so it can be calculated using this cumulative distribution function f. In this manner, we take uh, f, you remember this event, um, tail tail was mapped to three. So we take our cumulative function of three and subtract the, its value from the left. So we get this step one fourth. And yes, if you will read that book by Borovkov, it, he defines it in another way as um, um, continuous from left. Uh, in this case, instead of this less or equal, 
people use just less. So in different books, uh, there are a little bit uh, um, different definitions. And these errors then look in opposite direction. I hope now you have understanding of the notion of the commutative distribution function. So here are some more examples. Binomial distribution, which we were talking in the beginning, the Bernoulli scheme. So you remember it's this array of trays, trail, uh, trials. For example, let's take n trials. In each trial, we can have one or zero as output, success or fail. So, um, Our element of the elementary event is the sequence of zeros and ones of the length n. Now let's map. Uh, so our random variable c will map these elements to the number of ones. It's important to understand. For example, we have three trials. And there are three possibilities for one success, like one zero 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 one zero 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 one. Each of these events will be mapped only to one number, one. The number of success is one. So it's not one to one function C. Just good to, to be aware about that. So uh in this case the cdf cumulative distribution function can be defined as the sum of the probabilities of that events uh, are successes of n trials then uh, another example uniform distribution in this case our set is the um, interval a, b, and our function c random variable maps any point of this, from this interval to itself. In this case, the sigma algebra on our space is the same as the sigma algebra containing intervals, so it's Borel sigma algebra. And the probability here, um, can be defined as the measure of the element of this event B from our space divided by the measure of the whole space. It's important to note here that here the measure is Lebesgue measure, but um, the event, the set is. Uh, Baradian set. There is a theorem that um, this, the Baradian set sets are also measurable um, in the sense of Lebesgue. So uh, all Baradian sets are Lebesgue sets, but uh, not. Uh, vice versa in this and that's why we can use Lebesgue measure for Bar Borelian sets but we can't use Borelian measure for Lebesgue sets okay and uh, here are the um, properties of this uh, cumulative distribution function so just three properties and it means that if you construct your own or your personal function satisfying these three um, properties you can just introduce and call it by your name, your CDF. You can create a lot of different CDFs. Now, PDF, um, the last, yeah, upper last slide is the more complicated stuff. Um, well, if we, um, talk about the continuous distribution that is just the derivative of the CDF. But 
if we talk about um, discrete um, variables, then it's called probability mass fun function. It's and uh, it's like a countable measure. But here, I want to just to say that there are three kinds of distributions. So first is discrete. Second is, um, we use continuous, but uh, more general cases, absolute continuous, because they use, um, um, the functions could be not continuous, but with uh, steps. And, uh, or more complicated. And this, there is also the third uh, kind of distributions, singular one. It's continuous, but uh, at the same time, um, it has kind of steps um, in the countable, countable set of points. But uh, usually people just uh, work with two trust classes. And um, there's also theorem that any distribution can be can represented as the sum of these three, discrete, absolute, and singular one. And uh, here's the change of variables. I think I won't talk about this. I have three minutes and I'm going to the book. So um, all that I uh, represented was <laughs> in the book, it was just this two, one chap one page. So, okay. Here are the examples of distributions. I think all of you are familiar with these distributions, so I don't want to cover this. Also here we have the uh, moments like mean and variance. I think also all are familiar with that. Here's an interesting example that the first order statistics are not always very informative. For example, here you can see one, two, three, so many, many colored uh, dots and all of them have the same mean and the same variance. So it's just example that first order statistics sometimes don't give uh, information about the sets. Base bias rule, well, you can read this example. It's all based on this bias formula. And um, uh, what else? I think the most nice thing about this chapter that I found is that introduction of log sum exponential trick as uh, Jan Gold, 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 Goodfellow told in one of his lectures that it is one of the most useful um, thing that people working in deep learning have to know uh, that we can just add or subtract um, the power for exponent, exponent, and it will not change the probability. The, I think I don't have time now to cover the rest, but the rest is pretty, not a lot. I, I will continue next time. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Anton. That was so great. Um, uh, I guess some, uh, depending on what everybody wants to do, we can um, either end now, which would actually work fine for me. Um, uh, Anton, uh, would you, can you email me your slides? Absolutely. Okay, that way I can make and them I will, available. I, and I, will, I will also, uh, um, Correct. That <laughs> okay. Mistake from the beginning. Yeah, that way we can um, we can refer to them. Um, I'm going to set up a couple of pin pin posts in the deep learning group. Um, one will be basically a discussion where people can 
you know, ask questions or make comments on, on the various chapters. Um, and uh, um, I'm also gonna, there's a way of, uh, of providing files in the, in the group. Um, so I'll be posting people's, um, people's slides there as well. Um, I wanna thank all the participants for uh, um, being polite and not interrupting the speaker and uh, using the chat window to, to ask questions. Um, it's, uh, it's very nice. <laughs> um, and, um, and finally, thank, thank you all for your, your time and participation. Um, do feel free to uh, make comments in the, in the discussion um, posts that I'll set up in the, in the group. Um, it's really useful um, uh, for, it, it's useful for future presenters, um, you know, because some people are new, are new at this. Um, I, I, I am happy to say that I think um, five of our presenters um, are actually um, uh, professors at universities. So um, hopefully they have, they have experience of, around presenting material. Um, and if you have any comments on, on the format or suggestions on what we can do, um, I'm open to, you know, uh, to anything. So um, finally, one last thing, if um, I, I actually set up a, a distribution list for people um, who aren't necessarily in the deep learning group, um, but if you want to be notified by email um, with the Zoom link, just send me a private message on, on Facebook um, with your name and your email, and I'll add you to the list. And I usually send out the emails on, on Sunday morning. So it'll make it a little easier to, uh, um, you know, be aware of the upcoming sessions. Um, and uh, aside from that, uh, does anybody want to uh, make any comments? Um, you can unmute yourself now if you want. Um, uh, Okay, then I guess we'll we'll end uh, we'll end now. Um, uh, thank you very much, Anton. I appreciate you uh, doing this at the last minute because our our speaker canceled uh, on on Thursday. I was I was pretty upset. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. To be honest, as I wrote you, I found out I I found for myself the first chapters more annoying because I was thinking everybody knows that. Yes. But yes. then well, when I looked at the book. I realized that I should cover like extra material because yeah, and don't and don't make assumptions about what people know because hope. people come from very different backgrounds. Um, you know, I was a math major, was, so it, I hope it was helpful. Yeah, yeah it was very helpful. Um, I'll have a couple of questions for you that I'll I'll post in the in the discussion group. Um, you know, but um, everybody comes from different backgrounds. You know, some people are software engineers and they really don't do a lot of math. <laughs> you know, other people work in a research environment and read academic papers, you know, so um, I, I wouldn't assume uh, that anybody knows anything. Um, so, okay. Well, thank you very much all. And I will um, we'll be, I'll see you back here next week at the, at the same time. Okay. Uh, goodbye and have a great evening or, or day. It's your day is starting. Good morning. Yeah.